what is up everybody welcome back to another episode of lure painting with zach baker i'm zach baker of course and today we're doing part two of lure stencils from walmart uh it's only part two so you haven't missed much uh but the goal is that we go to walmart we find some sort of pattern or material that we can use to incorporate as a stencil in a lure painting video in today's episode we've got combs which if you've never used these before in any of your lure painting patterns i highly recommend it it's a super cool way to make some unique patterns and give some awesome stripes to your bait uh, this packet was less than four dollars and it's 12 different combs it's really nice because there's some big combs and some small combs we'll probably uh we'll do one or the other today i guess um but i also want to say i have written up here on the board i started a facebook group on facebook of course and it's called tackling the dream and the whole goal is to make a community of people that can uh, support one another. So if you have your own YouTube channel or you're painting your own baits or making your own baits or just going fishing in general, I want everybody to be able to post their stuff on there and we could all help each other out and support one another. There's already some other bait makers and painters on there and they're sharing their baits and they look killer. So if you other if you have like questions or you wanted to share stuff or stuff like that, uh, join that group and it's like I said, it's a private group. I don't know if I said that or not, it's a private group. So it'll just be people that, you know, I've seen the videos or I've talked to and stuff like that that are on there. Uh, but definitely go check that out. Without any more talking, let's go ahead and roll the intro and we'll jump right into painting this bait. Okay, something else I wanted to show you guys really quick. I've had a lot of people ask me where I get my uh, stands, and this is what they look like, and I get them from Harbor Freight. They are $5, it's four something, but they're called Helping Hands, and I have seen them on Amazon before. I think they cost a little bit more. If anyone finds a good location where these are stupid cheap, I would, I would you know, uh, let, let me know. But so far, the cheapest ones I've found have been at Harbor Freight. And your boy got a gift card to Harbor Freight for Christmas, so I picked up a couple more. Uh, I'm going to take this one out. I always take off the magnifying glass. It's going to get in my way, but that could come into handy uh, for somebody if they have uh, bad vision. But I'm going to go and open this up. We'll take this off, get out the bait, and then start painting. Here's the bait that we're going to be using today, and I figured I'd show you guys really, really, really fast uh, what I do before I tape up the bills. So I'm using Illumini UV as my clear coat for all my hard plastic baits like this one. And I've noticed, and it might work better too for people, anybody that's dipping their baits or maybe any clear coat in general, I haven't really had that much experience uh, with different types of clear coats. I know this works good for KBS and for Illumini UV, and it might be something you could try depending on whatever clear coat you're using. Uh, but I'll take uh, some sandpaper, and this was 180 grit, but it's really, really worn out. I've used it to sand down some other uh, wooden baits before. So I'd say it's more like a 250 grit at the stage that it's at right now. But I'll just take that and rough up the bill just a little bit before I put my tape on there. And that gives something for that clear coat to stick to, because these bills, and, I, and I've noticed with some blanks from some companies, the bill's already rough, others are not. This one is not rough to start with, so I notice that my clear coat uh, does not stick very well to it. Like it, it goes on, but they'll leave like streaks. It's really weird. But if I rough it up just a little bit, uh, then that gives something for that clear coat to settle into and stick better. So I just rough it up just like that, and I've just got some painter's tape that I use to tape up the the bills with. I'm sure this is pretty obvious for most people, but I just figured I would show you guys how I do it. And then I always just cut off the extra tape so it's not in my way. There we go. She is all ready to paint. We got our brand new shiny stand. Once again called Helping Hands. And they are very much helpful. Okay, I'm going to be doing a orange, green, yellow, and black paint pattern on this one. I think that's what I decided. I actually wrote it down the other day. Yep, orange, yellow, green, and black. And we're gonna be doing the dark black lines on it. 
So I'm going to start off with a, we're gonna keep this one kind of a transparent too. So we're gonna start off with a really bright orange. We're gonna spray the belly with that. So I'm gonna load that up into the brush and we'll get this thing rocking. So I got the orange loaded up into the brush and I'm using, if you guys haven't checked it out yet or you're curious, I'm using the airbrush from a beginner's kit off Amazon. The kit was $80, came with three brushes and a compressor. That's what I'm using today. Uh, I'll leave that video linked below for anyone that might be interested. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off by spraying the belly of this in this bright orange. And then I'm going to hit this with the hairdryer. My dog's sitting on the hairdryer cord. Move! Oh, there we go. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt your nap. Next, we're going to be spraying the bright, bright yellow, neon yellow, uh, along the sides. And it's a pretty thin paint, I'm sure. You might have noticed before if you've watched any of my other videos, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with the hair dryer and then we'll move on or we'll do another coat. There we go. So it is time to move on to, we got a nice pearlized green, which we're gonna do and we're gonna spray that all along here and then we'll move over to our black. And I might actually go back and I think I do this in almost every single video. I, I apologize. I might go back and spray some red on the belly or just do some red on the gill plate. I haven't quite decided yet, but uh, we'll do that. So we got that pearlized green loaded up and it might not show up too well on the camera, uh, but it is there. Okay, so we got that on. Made up my mind, I'm not going to be spraying any red on the belly, but we are going to do some right up here on the gill plate. Kind of have it fading into that orange on the belly. We'll do it some up around that nose. And yeah, we're gonna call it good right there. Okay, now the part we've all been waiting for, which is these combs, and there's actually a little pull tab. I pulled the scissors out because I didn't know how this was gonna be. But there we go, there's all of our different options. And this is actually really sweet. I mean, for four bucks, you really can't beat this. Uh, so what I like to do is when we have a smaller bait like this one, I like to use thinner, uh, the thinner side and the thicker side for other, you know, for bigger baits. So I wonder if those are, so yeah, those are wider. So this one will have wider uh, gaps. I don't know if that's making any sense. So each, each needle is thicker than the needles on this one, meaning the negative space will be wider. Um, that one's actually kind of cool too. I know there's all kinds of different types of combs. Uh, but what we're going to be doing is starting off with, I think we're going to be using this one. That'll be some nice stripes. Yeah, this is the one we're going to be using. This one's kind of nice because it has a handle and it's pink but let's get all those out of the way cool thing is if you have a beard like i do it doubles as a beard comb Woo! so what i'm going to be doing here is grabbing our i have some transparent black i'm going to be loading that up into the airbrush and then i found the easiest way to do this is just to hold the comb up there you got to be careful if you're holding it like this because you're overspray it'll leave a harsh line right where this is at so I always drop it down because most of the time I paint the top of my baits a darker color anyways. Or you can do it like this too, which might be our best bet. The only problem with this is that overspray will still show right here. So you have to be careful if you're spraying up here that you don't want your overspray to go down below where the comb is. Otherwise your stripe will just end and it'll it'll be obvious that it was a comb. Whereas if you kind of do it like, like lower than whatever that overspray is, is going to be up there and this will eliminate any overspray that's down there. Uh, I've never really tried to clamp these to my baits or to this, so I, I don't know any good answers for that. But what I do do is I just hold it. It's quick enough. If you're trying to do more than one color, you'll probably have to figure out a way to clamp it. But this is what I've been doing. It seems to work good for me. If I quit punching the camera. So that's all it is. And now you've got some killer looking stripe. So I'm going to hit that with the hair dryer. We'll turn the bait around and do the other side. 
And it's also important too, if you're flipping your comb back and forth, that you hit your comb with the hair dryer. That way if you set it on there and it moves, you're not smearing any paint. All right, so let's flip this bad boy around. I believe I had it like this. If not, then we'll do it this way on this side. Oop, got that one a little bit darker than I intended. And you can tell I kind of moved the comb just a little bit, but that's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and spray the back of this black and we're gonna do just a little bit up where these eyes are. I want that gill plate to mostly stay red. And there we have it. I think we are golden on paint here. This bad boy is ready for some eyes. One thing I did want to show you guys really quick is if you put like a stencil pattern over it, spray your colors, and then while the stencil pattern is on, you spray these black lines. So you can see on this one uh, where the black lines were, but it really helps break up the lines a little bit more. It just adds in another nice detail. Like when you look at this bait, that's not the first thing you notice. At least I don't. Uh, but if you put your stencil pattern on first, it'll kind of break it up too. And I think, it, I mean, you can do all kinds of crazy uh, patterns with this, just incorporating it in there. Another thing that I like doing, and I don't have an example with me, is if you do something like this, but you don't spray it a dark, dark black like I did, or like on this bait, uh, you know, it's a green, you know, a couple different shades of green. If you did like a darker green, but it's not really thick. So then it, it's really a faint lines in there. And that's a good way to incorporate this into some other baits rather than it being the sole center of it. I mean, with these lure stencils from Walmart, I'm trying to make sure whatever stencil we're using is very obvious that we see what it's doing. But if you did it really thin, uh, it would add a nice subtle detail to it. So we're gonna go ahead and pick out some eyes for the bait that we're working on today. We've got, uh, let's see here, orange, green, and black. I'm thinking I've got the perfect eyes for this, and I've used them in a couple different videos, but I think they'll go go uh, they'll go really good with the bright orange on the belly. So I'm gonna grab all that stuff out, and we'll get that on there. So I was going to use these, but there's I don't you know the outside of it's silver, and I don't have any other silver on the bait. I mean, as cool as those would look, I think we're actually going to be using these, which is kind of like an orange, a red, and a black, and I think that goes a little bit better with what we got going on with this color scheme. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. Uh, as always, I like to put a little dab of super glue in there to make sure to hold the eyes down. One thing I found really helpful is if you grab the eye before you put the glue in, because there's been a couple times where I'll put that glue in there, and I go to grab the eye and it goes launching or it won't come off or this and that, and then by the time you actually go to put the glue or put the eye in, the glue's dry. So grabbing the, the eye, getting it ready on your tweezers, uh, then there's it eliminates room for error. So I'm just going to put a little bitty dab of glue on there, hopefully. A lot more. I had to cut the tip of my glue off because it was dry. And we'll just slide her on. Whoop. Hold her into place for a hot second. And then we will repeat that on the other side. And there we have it. So this bait is ready for clear coat or my name and clear coat. Another quick thing I will say, uh, if you haven't seen it yet, I have a YouTube video on how to put your logo onto a fishing lure or your name. If you're like me and can paint really good baits but you have terrible handwriting, uh, I use, it's called water slide or water transfer material so you can print it and then you can apply that to the bait but it's really important especially if you're using createx brand like i am uh, you want to give your bait a little bit of a clear coat before you put this on since this is water transfer so what i use and you'll see it in the video i just use like a uh, uh, polyurethane clear spray paint and then the other thing is you before you spray that you want to make sure this is completely dry if you're in a huge hurry like i never do this on any baits i intend on selling there's been some baits where i'm just wanting to take it fishing with me that day i'll go ahead and spray it on right now but you risk the uh, polyurethane interacting with the acrylic or it's not necessarily acrylic but in other words the two paints will mix together and it'll cause your uh, airbrush paint to bubble and or crackle and potentially ruin your paint job. I've had that happen a couple different times and it really sucks when it's uh, a custom order and it's the only blank you have <laughs> and you do that. 
Uh, so I quit doing that whenever that happened. So now what I like to do, him with the hair dryer, make sure they're dry, and I'll just let them sit out for a couple hours or even overnight. For this video, I'll just probably let it sit for a couple hours to make sure it's dry. Hit it with a thin coat of that polyurethane, and then we will apply the name to it, and then the clear coat. So I will uh, probably show you guys me applying the name on it just for aesthetic reasons, and then we will come back once this clear coat is dry, and we will see what she looks like. I'll finish up with Boom, there we go folks. She is all clear coated up. I used Illumini UV for the finish. We're rocking some size two uh, split rings and some size four treble hooks. I think she turned out really well. Uh, like I said at the beginning of this video, if you haven't ever given this a try for your lure stencils, I definitely recommend it. I want to do this pattern again, only doing like a uh, silver and black instead of doing the green. Uh, but there's, you know, there's so many different types of combinations you can do with colors and having those stripes definitely is an easy way of doing that rather than trying to buy a stencil made for that lure. This one, you can use it on any stencil you want. Like I said at the beginning of the video, make sure you guys go check out Tackling the Dream on Facebook. It's just a private group I made for anyone that's painting lures or fishing or whatever it is you're doing. Uh, just share your stuff on there. We can build a community of people to help one another out if anyone else has questions. And at the time of me filming this, we are almost to 1,000 subscribers on YouTube here. So thank you guys so much for all the love you've been showing my channel. I appreciate it. And I will catch you guys next time with another video. Peace.